Hey there, I'm your host, the Bread Pirate. Let's fix rupees. So as most of us know, rupees are those sweet, succulent gems which are found all around Hyrule. They've been in practically every Zelda game. It's okay, Zelda 2, we still love you. And are now a staple of the franchise. Now, Breath of the Wild did a lot of things right, but I think we can all agree there is room for improvement, and rupees are one of those things. By my reckonings, there are three main elements to rupees in Breath of the Wild which could be improved. The amount of rupees, the way you get rupees, also known as acquisition, and what you spend rupees on. Also, there is a really good video done by Croton about rupees. We're covering different stuff mostly, but he's worth a watch. He's a great content creator. Let's begin with amount. You might not have noticed this, but Breath of the Wild has a lot more rupees than previous Zelda games. Things are more expensive, people sell things for large sums of cash, and it's easy to go and kill your local stone talus for those juicy minerals. Clearly, Hyrule is going through economic inflation. Just look at the differences in prices between the original Legend of Zelda and Breath of the Wild. In ye olden days, you could snag a new outfit for 250 rupees. Whoa. That was the most expensive thing in the game, after all. But not anymore! Breath of the Wild makes shops from the original Legend of Zelda look like garage sales! Arrows that used to be a single rupee each are now four to five rupees each. I like to think in my head that in Breath of the Wild's timeline, the Minish accidentally made too many rupees, which caused them to stop minting new currency and explains why you can't find money in grass anymore, but that's off topic! The question here is whether inflation in Breath of the Wild is inherently bad or not. You either fall into one of two schools on this topic. Either you are okay with the high numbers because the game is made balanced using inflation, or you think that having high inflation in a Zelda game makes rupees less rewarding to collect and adds unnecessary math to the game. But I'm really curious. What do you guys think about this inflation? The way you get rupees in Breath of the Wild can be boiled down to four categories. Questing, selling, exploration, and mini games. It's not that bad of a system actually, but it still could use some oomph juice in a few spots. With questing, I believe there are two things that could use improvement. First off, the game could tell you how many rupees you will get before you accept the quest and not after you finish it. And secondly, rupee rewards should be more uh, indicative of the effort it takes to complete them. Sometimes you do a super simple task and get, you know, like 300 rupees. Other times you have to go to the inferno and back and still get uh, uh, 300 rupees. For future reference, let's try and make the rupee equal the reward, all right? When it comes to selling stuff for cash, not all NPCs should pay Link the same amount for his junk. Look at this guy, he's a meat merchant. What the heck does he want to buy my guardian parts for? What should happen is that depending on the NPC you trade with, you will get different offers. So when you decide to sell meats, make sure you sell them to the meat merchant. And when you decide to sell guardian parts, sell them to the guardian's parts enthusiast. Otherwise, you'll get a bad offer. If you're too lazy to find the proper merchant, then just go to the general store, where they'll be sure to give you a mediocre, albeit acceptable price. All in all, shopping is a really big topic, which is why we're going to have to have an entire episode dedicated to it in the future. So, if that interests you, consider finding a way to stay up to date with channel uploads. Ah yes, exploration. Right, so this actually was well done. Wander around long enough and you'll find rupees in chests and shrines. It works. I think it would be nice though if there were traditional style mini dungeons scattered throughout the game, where the reward at the end, instead of being spirit orbs, was a chest full of rupees, averaging around a thousand or so. It would add some great variety to the shrine system, which lord knows it really needs. Mini games. Yeah, mini games were actually done pretty well. I just think the reward for them should be a little bit more uh, worthwhile in the end especially in bizarre situations such as the ones that uh, Medi got into in this video. And those are the four ways in which we can fix how we get rupees in Breath of the Wild. Lastly, there's purpose. What is there to spend rupees on? Now, Croton did a great job with this topic in his video about rupees, so I'm not going to plow the same field as him. All I want to say is this. If Breath of the Wild follows previous trends by adding more types of things we can purchase, then Nintendo is doing a great job. But who knows, maybe I sound crazy. Let me know whether I do or not in the comment section below. I will reply to and read all comments. If you guys have any other areas of the game you wanna see covered in the future, tell me about them. We'll make sure to give you a shout out. Thanks for watching, and until next time, have fun storming the castle.